Today I'm gonna try to make a dog yawn. Okay, let's see that. Good mythical morning! Yes, my hair is down, but soon it will go up, don't worry. Uh, occasionally, on a weekly basis, in fact, we ask you to ask us questions about advice that we can give you. And then we answer some of those, like we're gonna do right now, to the benefit of all of society. Elliot Gavin asks on Facebook, the awkward scratch, we've all done it. When you need to scratch somewhere in inappropriate in a public place, nose. Like your butt, butt he says that. Crotch. What am I supposed to do? The social timeout? Make that funny dance like I'm being tickled by no one? Help! Now, now, what? Now, oh, he said help. help. Okay, That's how I, I didn't read that. I thought you were already giving your answer. <laughs> I thought that was your answer. Yeah, if your butt itches in public, just go, help! But maybe somebody will come up and scratch it for you. Now, first of all, we are fans of the social timeout. If we didn't even invent it, which we may have invented that. Yeah, we um, do. So we're always in favor of calling the social timeout and just calling it like it is. Yo, my butt itches. I'm going to scratch it. You're going to be okay with it. Yours itches sometimes too. I bet it's itching right now. We can scratch simultaneously. I can scratch yours. You can no, scratch no, no, mine. No, no, no. Don't want to do that. Scratch, scratch and your sniff. own. Scratch your own butt. <laughs> Scratch your own Matter butt. of fact, it, my nose is itching. My butt is not itching right now, but I, I'm gonna be honest. My butt itches a lot. I have developed something which could be advice for you. It's called, um, what? My butt's itching right now. You, you said, <laughs> my butt itches a lot. I have developed something, like a rash. <laughs> like that's I've what did, it made no, it sound I've like I've developed you were a strategy oh, to scratch it in public. I have developed a condition. A strategy to scratch it in public. I'm it's not called comfortable with it. The wallet grab. What I'll do is, and it doesn't even matter if your wallet's really there, wherever you're itching, Reach for your wallet and then act like you can't quite get it out of your pocket. That's a little too far over there, isn't it? Like, well, no one looks that close. They, people tend to avert their eyes when someone is reaching for their wallet. Okay. So you reach, and then if it still itches by the time you actually pull out the wallet, if it's still itching, then have a really hard time putting the wallet back in the pocket. Okay, that's good. So it's like I have a really, can't quite get my wallet back in my pocket. I'm actually scratching my butt. But you don't know that. I think you gotta take advantage of the surroundings. Like, you know like sometimes you'll see like a bike that'll be like on a rack. I think you just kinda be like, oh, I, I've, been, I've been meaning to get one of these. Let me test it out real quick. And you kinda get on it and you just kinda linger a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta censor that. <laughs> what? And no, no, and then, or maybe like you're at the mall and like you could, you could go through a gate or you could like, I wanna climb that fence. And like you just get, on, get stuck on the fence. You're like, Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm stuck on this fence. Use your surroundings. That's like a cow. I mean, literally, cows will back up to a post and scratch their butt. I've seen them do no it. No one will suspect Humans anything. Humans should not no, do no that. No, no one will suspect. They'll be like, he, he's, in a, he's testing that bike out. And you know, he's, I, I'm seeing if the seat works. Time to fix your hair. All right, now we're going to move on to the next thing, which is the second installment of the Axe Styled in Seconds Challenge, where Rhett styles his hair in the amount of time it takes for me, hopefully, to complete a task. Win or lose, at the end of 10 of these, someone is going to have, well, the loser is going to have to get their whole front, well, from the belt up, waxed. Their whole torso. <laughs> okay, Link's gonna see if he can get Stevie's dog, Enzo, to yawn before I finish styling my hair. Link, are you ready? Yeah. Enzo, you're getting very sleepy. Styling begins in three, two, one, go. Yes! He did it! No, what? I he yawned! I won! I won! I win week two! Now we're tied! Give me that star! Okay, one to one. Eight weeks to go. They're contagious. Yawns. Next question. Okay, uh, Morgan Tyler Green asks, I want to laugh at inappropriate times. Any advice on how to better control this urge? So you don't want to laugh at inappropriate times, but you find yourself doing it. She said, I want to laugh at inappropriate times. Yeah, I think she meant, I laugh I have a desire. at inappropriate times. Oh, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know, I know what Morgan's asking because I have this problem. First of all, 
whenever somebody accuses me of something that I didn't do, I always have a guilty look on my face. And whenever somebody tells me bad news, I want to laugh. I don't know why. Is that a good trait? I specifically remember, um, let's see, this senior year in high school, my girlfriend at the time, we went to the beach with my family. We were on the beach. All of a sudden, we didn't have cell phones out on the beach. My aunt- Didn't have cell phones, period. Yeah, I guess you're right. My aunt comes down and she says, I just got a phone call. She's talking to my girlfriend. I had bad news. She said, someone close to her had died. Okay. And she's upset. This is like a relative or something. I can't remember. But this person died and I'm the only person there to comfort her. And so I remember she like gives me a hug and she's starting to cry. And I realized I had a smile on my face. Now, don't hate me. I was very sad. But I, yeah, it really I, shows. I felt, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I'm smiling. But I wasn't smiling because I, I, I think I was smiling because I was so uncomfortable and didn't know what to do. So it was like a nervous kind of, <laughs> well, and I was, I was, but I, was, I felt horrible about it. And I, but I did hide it. And that, I like hugged her for a long time. Until it went away, until the smirk went away? <laughs> I think so. Well, but see, this is, this is what you should have done. And this is what Morgan can do. When you find yourself laughing at inappropriate times, you need to transition the laugh into a cry. So right when the person begins to question- Laugh so whether, hard you cry? Right when they begin to question whether or not you're laughing, they're like, oh no, he's crying. In fact, we can role play. I can tell you that somebody close to me has died and I'll hug you and you can laugh and cry. I'm so sorry. Hold on, let me tell you, you don't even know who died, man. I heard somebody died, it doesn't matter. My friend Ralph, man. man oh, Ralph? Really, yeah, yeah, he's, he's almost as good of a friend as you. I'm sorry, give me a hug right quick. <laughs> I don't know. Was that convincing? No, no, no. That's not what I did with my girlfriend. I was just like, I was, I was kind of. I guess that could be the, uh, that the motion horrible, of sobs. Horrible advice. Don't take that, Morgan. You know what day it is? It's Thursday. Don't cry or laugh. And Thursday. You, you can laugh. Means me. I'll cry. We don't care. Uh, you can mail us stuff. If we choose to highlight it on this episode in, in Ladder Weeks, you will win a- In Ladder Weeks. Bram! Ladder Weeks. You win a signed Good Mythical Morning poster. If you don't want to submit something and still get one of these, you can purchase one. It will also be signed. It's very shiny. Our DFTBA. Doubles as a mirror. Uh, congratulations to Dorian and Colin from Hawaii for winning that poster. You can fight over it. Hawaii is a state now. Dear Rhett and Link, we have almost we have seen almost all the episodes of GMM and GMCL episodes, and still haven't heard or seen an episode where you guys talk about Hawaii. Hey, you hear Hawaii is a state. It's the fiftieth. We thought we would send a bit of the islands to you. Inside this box are a few things exclusively found in Hawaii, including prepared squid and going on the mythical bell boater, which spins magically. This. Shell smells like Hawaii. Sounds like Hawaii. Just because something smells and sounds like Hawaii, Whoa, I, mean I it's Hawaii. should not have opened that. Smell the islands. Breathe oh. it in. Oh goodness. Oh, you're supposed to eat it, man. What do you mean by prepared? I think it's been ill prepared. Hmm. Oh, very salty. Can you get it down? I can get the. Oh. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Reagan. I'm Dylan. And I'm Miley. And this is Shuggy. And we're from Missouri. It's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. I feel like I found something laying on the beach that had been begun to rot. I'm not gonna not finish this though. It starts to taste like bad clams. Mmm. Greatest bedtime story ever told. This is me and you telling the kids? Hey, I always vomit when telling my kids bedtime stories. This is perfect. I can't get it down. I'm gonna spit it into their letter. Mine's gone. That's totally gone. Dude, what an insult, man. I am sorry, kids, that it took so long for you guys to get in bed tonight. That's why they sent the letter. I mean, we read it all and, on the air. And here's your bedtime story. On the air. Once upon a time. There was a boy named Bobby who saw something laying on the beach and thought, 
I'm hungry, there's a dead fish. And he had a friend who he shared it with, who said, oh, we're such good friends, I'm gonna chew this for a little bit, and then I'm gonna spit it down into the letter that you mailed me. And the moral and of the you, story is... Be insulted by men with beards who spit in your letters. Good night. Okay, well, I'll put it back in my mouth. You swallow that. You swallow it. <laughs> Enjoy. Squid at any time in any place. Just open the bag and serve at parties. Make don't, sure you don't open that at a party. So make sure you have enough 